giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So the first thing that we're going to be discussing is an expansion of FTC Canada. So First Canada has officially in announced that they are launching FTC in Canada for next year. Uh, so what do you guys think of this? And if we can throw the uh, announcement up on the screen, Tyler, that'd be awesome. So this comes as no surprise to me. Um, I think that with all the changes to the Chairman's Award, which FIRST has made, which is um, pretty much it focuses on growing FIRST as a program instead of STEM as a whole, um, I think a lot of FRC teams are starting to work on FTC teams instead of VEX teams, and VEX is huge in Canada right now. So the fact that they're creating FTC Ontario just goes to show that all these FRC teams are probably going to create FTC teams, and then it's going to become a powerhouse, just like Michigan. What I'm really excited for with this is like introduction of like new competition and a lot of like very competitive teams. And as Ishan mentioned, like we have a lot of FRC teams that are supporting this, and I think this will lead to some pretty good FTC teams showing up from Canada next year. I think so too. Uh, Ontario especially has always been pretty darn good at FRC and VEX. I know they're pretty consistently in VEX World Finals as well. So that'll be exciting to see as well as some more variation on competitiveness outside of the U.S. FTC is basically just U.S. and sometimes a couple of Romanian teams right now. So that'll be really exciting. Yeah, yeah totally. I agree. And then um, if you can't read the announcement, so what's going to happen next year is that 36 teams are going to compete in Ontario FTC. Uh, they're going to have two slots to the, I believe, Detroit Championship. Um, <laughs> yes, Detroit Championship. Um, and so I think seven of those slots, if I'm remembering correctly, will go to already existing FTC teams. And then everything else is open up for new teams. And then I think the goal is after that, they're going to open that up to have even more than 36. Uh, hopefully they'll create a, a large region there with hundreds some teams. That'd be pretty awesome to see. So I know that uh, Canada already has a bunch of teams. So if you remember that in Velocity Vortex, um, the Inspire Award winner at the Houston World Championship was Fix It, and they were from British Columbia, Canada. And um, a lot of those Canadian teams, they had to actually like drive out into the States in order to compete. So I know Fix It would always go to the Washington State Championship. And there are teams in Ontario, and the fact that they're going to be able to compete in their home instead of having to drive three, four, five, five hours in order to get to a state championship that they can compete at, it's going to be a great way to improve um, FTC as a whole in Canada. Something to mention, too, if you do want to uh, look at FRC, when Canada went from di from regionals to districts, Honestly, there was two big powerhouse teams in Canada, maybe a couple more, right? Now, Canada, when they go to the World Championships for FRC, has over a dozen powerhouse teams that come in. So you can see a very similar correlation, I would think, will happen with FTC as well. That should yeah, be really exciting. I totally agree. I'd love to see if 11-14 uh, is Ontario, right? I'd love to see if they'll uh, make a competitive FTC team. Uh, that'd be pretty cool to see a powerhouse Canadian team coming to Detroit. Also, um, this might affect First Global because last year for First Global, they had 2056, which was an FRC team representing Canada. And they had a little bit of problems just getting used to the scale of the robot. They didn't have a bad robot, but they weren't the best robot. And I think that um, having FTC will allow them to grow in First Global as well. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um, I guess now that you mentioned First Global, just to Sean, curiously, who do you think is going to be the first global team this year? Do you think it's going to go to an Inspire Award winner? Um, for this year, it, I know that the executive board for first is going to choose who it is. I would be surprised if they picked anybody but the Inspire Award winner. So they'll probably pick one of the Inspire Award winners, either from Houston or from Detroit, um, to go to first global this year. Nice. Um, and kind of with that, we're going to move on over to the state of Oregon, where we had some new recent news come out about the debacle that occurred during alliance selection. For those that did not hear, but I think most of you probably watching already know, uh, there was a uh, team during the Oregon alliance selection that told uh, the, I think, second and fourth seated captains, maybe the fifth seat as well, that they that the robot was not working, uh, that they would not be able to perform well during alliance selection, that it was not fixable during the tournament. Uh, but they did tell the number one, and I believe the number three alliance per this um, report here, uh, that their robot works perfectly and that they would love to compete with them. And the number one alliance, they ended up being the second pick in the number one alliance. 
and they ended up winning the Oregon State Championship for the number two pick on the number one alliance and ended up winning Oregon. Um, what do you guys kind of think about that? There's this whole report that came out about it. Uh, the organization did this massive like investigation, talking to teams, talking to volunteers, uh, talking to everyone involved. The team then responded with an email. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think like what the organization did, like what or tap, is that what it's called? Or tap. Um, or, or yeah. So what they did is, I mean, I think it's definitely like, it, it, it was like the good and like I think like that is like the plan of action that they should have taken and I mean I know like uh, as first like a big part is gracious professionalism and I think like uh following that is really important and like that's what first is trying to push with this whole thing and like they're trying to like make sure teams really really abide by gracious professionalism rules and I think that I'm sort of surprised that first hasn't put any rules in the FTC game manual about mm -hmm this sort of behavior because Tyler, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I read some rules in the FRC game manual talking about like how you shouldn't lie in the line section and you shouldn't throw matches. Oh yeah. There's, there's definitely a rule against it. And I would be willing to guess that that will be probably in the FTC rules moving forward as well. Oh, it, it actually says in the report that FTC is going to add rules for next year. Yeah. Um, now FTC, oh, uh, FTC Oregon is or FTC as a global program is going to. It says it says that globally they that there's probably going to be rules in there for next year. I believe that's in the second paragraph, second or third paragraph. Mm -hmm. I think it just comes down to gracious professionalism. The teams that do this sort of stuff, I mean, it's just ungracious, and um, mm -hmm. it could hurt them in the future, even if it doesn't hurt them at that direct competition. So, something real right. quick, I'll just add in. So if you if you want to make a comparison to the FRC back in 2012. Uh, there was a very infamous hacking incident that happened. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you straight up that, uh, you know, it was something where there was hacking at Einstein. It caused the team not to win the world championship. Big deal, right? And, you know, that person's been banned from first. But I'll tell you what, there are still a lot of people, and, and honestly, including myself sometimes, who still think of that team in a negative light because of what happened by that one individual. Now, it'd be easy for me to say, you know what, oh, I don't think about that team anymore. But if that team number comes up to me, in FRC, that's the first thing I think of is something like that. Even though nobody on that team represented that person, even though nobody on that team does anymore, no matter what you do, always remember that you represent your team as a whole. No matter how much of an idiot you are in the FTC Discord, you represent your team as a whole, and we remember that. Just keep that in mind, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, and I mean, just going off that, I think for the next long time, everyone's going to remember 2012 is the hacking year, the hacking year, the tornado year, the drunk fans running in. <laughs> if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch the first two episodes of Candidly Speaking. That's on our YouTube, youtube.com slash first updates now. That's actually how I found fun because it was like recommended in my YouTube because I watched so many robotics things and I watched them. I was like, oh my God, these are amazing. This is hilarious. And then... Long story short, I'm on the show. It, um, it is one of those amazing. epic stories of all time in first history. I don't care what it's, program you're in. Like, it's not even just the the hacking incident. It was the entire thing leading up to Einstein that was crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so there was a tornado going on. Um, there. So the, in St. Louis, though, the uh, dome is the tornado shelter, right? It was in St. Louis at that time? Yep, it was at the uh, uh, Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Or Edward, yeah, Edward Jones Dome as the tornado shelter. So everyone was fine. You just couldn't be on the actual floor, but there was still a show going on in the, like, the show of FRC in the middle of this tornado. Um, I mean, in the story, I think Karthik talks about there's some drunk fans because the St. Louis, uh, the Cardinals baseball game got canceled. Some fans broke into the stadium and like started running on the field. Um, it, it was a very crazy year. So just go watch. The, if you get a chance, watch Candidly Speaking episodes one and two. Uh, which all lead up uh, to this episode one is everything that led up to it. And then episode two is literally what happened for things. So if you ever want some good first history, sincerely, that is, that is solid gold quality content right there. Oh, it's amazing. When can we get something like that for FTC? So we can do a whole show about something hilarious. Um, I mean, I, I think you hope that doesn't happen, but if it does, we'll <laughs> right, cover it. Right. How's that? Right. Yeah. More so want a funny story than a hacking incident. Um, right. But I guess with that, um, if you're at Worlds and you're in contention for a line selection, don't tell someone your robot up. broke. Yeah. Just don't. Yeah. Please don't. We need your help to keep fun, loud, live, and independent. 
Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.